Hi, my name is Rob Cumming. I'm the Environment and Public Affairs Head for Lafarge Eastern Canada. Thank you for joining me today as I talk about Lafarge Wholesome's strategy to reach net zero and also how that affects us in Lafarge Canada. Just a bit about our company, Lafarge Wholesome is the world's largest building materials company. We have operations throughout the world and we uh, manufacture cement, concrete, we also quarry aggregates and sand, and recently we've got into roof production as well. Some quick interesting things, at least I think they are interesting, is that uh, cement is the concrete as yeast is the dough. So it's a common misconception that it's a cement sidewalk that you walk on, it's actually a concrete sidewalk. There is more concrete sold per year than all other building materials combined. In fact, it's the second highest consumed material in the world, second only to water which makes for some interesting realities that even though our product is very low in terms of carbon intensity, so much of it is sold per year that we actually represent a significant source of CO2 around the world. So we're estimated to represent as a sector, five to 8% of the world's CO2 emissions. And put that in context, Canada only represents about 2% of the global emissions. So you can see as a sector, we realize we have some work to do. But what I think is really exciting about this is that we represent uh, a real opportunity uh, to make some significant reductions with some of the technologies that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. Before I talk about our net zero path, I want to talk a bit about my experience with sustainability over the years. When I graduated in 1989, the environment was considered to be very technical, is more focused on water and waste management. And over the years, I've watched some trends in our industry, but also more broadly throughout bus the business world itself. And even to the point where there was a time when even recognizing that climate change was anthropogenic, caused by human activities, was considered leading edge. I think we've all moved past that at this point. And uh, we're seeing the most recent trends are that we're trying to move now beyond some of those earlier ambition type statements where we, we hope to reach a certain target. We as a company are trying to move past that and actually have a plan to achieve specific reductions. Science-based targets is one of the first things we've done in recent years to validate the commitments we have made as a company to reach a lower carbon intensity. Sustain analytics is a way to assess our company from a sustainability perspective. Very important to a lot of our investors we believe in the future, there's going to be a lot of sustainability investment, and we want to be at the forefront of that. And we're considered to be the most sustainable company in our sector based on the work done by Sustain Analytics. The Carbon Disclosure Project is also an important initiative for us, too. It ensures that we're sharing very transparently our carbon emissions, but also our progress to reduce them. In order to move ahead, we need partners, and we recognize that. I'll talk a bit here about some of our network partners. Zero Waste, which is the National Zero Waste Council in Canada, is an important part of our circular economy plans. GLOBE is the North American leading uh, sustainability conference that's held every second year in Vancouver, and we partner regularly with our partners there. The SPEN Association of Canada and all our other associations that we are involved with are also very important partners to us in order to move forward. While we have a number of things we are planning to do in the next five years with known technology, and I will talk a bit about that, there's some very exciting things happening in our industry right now. I believe we're at a point in our industry where we're going to see dramatic change at a rate of change that we've not seen for decades. Just some of our commitments we've made is we're going to start introducing and announcing low carbon products that can be bought today. We've already done that in November in Eastern Canada. We launched our EcoPack product line and we're looking to expand that to other low carbon products in the future as well. So you are now able to buy a low carbon concrete in Canada for the first time. We're planning to recycle over 100 million tons of waste and byproducts throughout the globe. We're gonna scale up some of the new technologies of new types of cement. We will double our waste derived fuels that are in our production to reach 37% by 2030. We will reach 475 kilograms per ton of cementitious material as a target by 2030. So how are we going to get there? This is our roadmap. This outlines many of the different technologies that we need to do. 
energy efficiency is always one of the first ones we can look at. We've already made a lot of progress on that. We can replace the fossil fuels that we use to make our cement with alternatives that are low carbon. We can look for renewable energy for our scope two carbon emissions. And we can look for new ways of manufacturing cements that will meet construction needs with much lower carbon emissions. And finally, carbon capture is a final technology that we can evaluate. So this gives you a sense of where we are as a company globally in our targets that we're trying to achieve. We are in our sector, the most carbon efficient. Our competitors are, are above us in terms of the carbon emissions. We have set a target to reach 475 uh, kilograms of carbon per our products uh, by 2030. And that's been validated by science-based targets. We know how we're gonna get there and we will get there. In Eastern Canada, we're currently at a target of 561 and we expect to reach 475 within three or four years. Just a bit about cement and concrete because it's important to understand our, our, our sector in order to understand some of the things I'm gonna share with you. Uh, we make cement by taking limestone, heating up to a very high temperature using fossil fuels. What that does is drive off the CO2 molecule off the limestone. And that's why two thirds of our carbon emissions from cement manufacture are coming from that process itself. And the other one third is from our fossil fuel use. In that process, we then add stone, gravel, sand, and water to the cement. And that's what ends up making the concrete that you're more familiar with. So here are some existing technologies that we can apply to produce a special low carbon cement. Obviously the baseline of a typical cement plant is between 700 and 800 kilograms of CO2 per ton of product. We can replace our fossil fuels with low carbon alternatives. We can increase the number of mineral additions to still give you the same product performance. And now you can see we're also down to just over 600 by doing so. If we can continue to increase the use of low carbon fuels in our technologies and replace the rest with natural gas, you can see already we're down to 450 kilograms per ton of cement. And then we can look at new formulations where we can deliver modified properties and that meet the needs of the construction sector at an even lower carbon intensity. You see in that picture, that's the low carbon fuel system that was installed at the bath cement plant in Ontario. So a bit about our Geocycle contribution. Geocycle is a wholly owned company from Lafarge, and they are the ones that look for low carbon fuel alternatives and take those materials out of the landfill sector and into our cement plants, replacing fossil fuels. Over 2.2 million tons of waste and byproducts were recycled and repurposed in Eastern Canada in 2019. We are a major recycling and, and uh, conservation company. So when we put this together in actual products that you will see on the on your sidewalk, for example, or, or in a foundation for a basement, we can take a traditional approach, use cement, water, and aggregates to form a concrete. And if we can replace our fuels with low carbon fuels, which we're already starting to do, you can see we're getting a 23% reduction. Then we start moving into some alternative mixes where we add byproduct cements that are available from various sectors. And we can get down to 30 to 50% lower carbon content. And beyond that, we need to start using some um, additives in the cement, in the concrete mix in order to get the uh, product performance that you're looking for as a customer. We can probably go down to as low as 80% lower if we can work with a customer, making sure that we work with them on the standards they need to meet. The final one, which is very interesting, this is where it gets really exciting in our sector, is if we can find ways to mineralize carbon with calcium, we can form a manufactured gravel, a manufactured sand that actually is carbon negative. That's carbon sequestration. So now we're adding a negative carbon aggregate to our low carbon cements, and we can have a concrete that is minus 300 kilograms per meter cubed. Now, when you build using concrete, then you'll be seeing a negative carbon effect on your, your net zero target. So very exciting. And I'll be talking a bit more about these technologies shortly. So we're very proud to have announced in November that the EcoPact brand, it's the first product launch in Canada of a low carbon concrete. And it's already available in the first two phases. So EcoPact and EcoPact Prime, as you can see on the screen here, are the first two products we've launched already. And we'll be launching the rest in the near future to get down to uh, as low as 80 or 90%. 
So with EcoPack, that's using many of the traditional technologies. We're essentially using the, the known technologies that we have today and we'll work with our customer to, to confirm and validate those carbon numbers. When we get into the EcoPack Prime, we're now at a point where we need to work with our customer and identify mixes that meet their performance requirements, but maybe outside of the normal uh, concrete specifications. What I like about EcoPact is it is a conversation. It's an ecological product, for, hence the eco, but it's also a pact with our customers that we will work with them to find a formulation that gives them the lowest carbon content they can get while still meeting their requirements. When we get the EcoPact Max, we're looking at, as I said earlier, potentially different additives to, to address uh, performance issues, to bring it back up to the performance that is required. So I talked a bit about this in terms of performance. An example I would use here is a concrete sidewalk. Very traditionally today, our customers will ask for a specific concrete mix design. And if they are prepared to work with us, for example, having a longer set time or a, lo a lower strength or reaching that same strength over a longer period of time, they may be very satisfactory to the customer in terms of their needs. But what it does do is allows us to develop a product solution that is much lower in, in carbon content. So what I like about those conversations with our ultimate customer is that we can custom mix something to meet their specific requirements, or we can do a mix and match where some of the concrete applications in a building, for example, may be traditional standard mixes or the purposes they need, but there may be portions of that building where they can live with a longer set time, for example, or a, a longer period of time to get to a traditional 28 day strength. So with those conversations in mind, we can come back to our customers with some options. We also have the ability to add recycled content in, and that gives it uh, the extra uh, eco label uh, potential for, for our customers. Here's a bit of a sense of what we can do with uh, a cubic meter of EcoPact, some 9,565 smartphone charges, for example. We can achieve quite significant reductions because of, as I talked about earlier, our sector is a significant carbon source, but we're also a significant solution provider as well. So we're going to be doing this across the globe. We just launched recently in Mexico, the same EcoPact type of strategy. It is going to be a global brand for us. And here's just a, a repeat here of what I said earlier that when we add in recycled aggregates, it goes from EcoPack to EcoPack Plus. Now, one of the most important elements, in my opinion, to move forward on net zero is we need to have standards in terms of carbon calculations so that a customer can order a concrete mix or a steel or glass or any building material with a certain carbon content using an approved methodology. Within the next couple of months, you're going to see Canadian Standards Association coupled with ASTM will jointly release the new Carbon Star Standard. And that would allow us as a provider of concrete to give you a specific kilograms of CO2 per meter cubed of concrete. And it'll give you that in a certifiable way whether it's built on environmental product declarations or whether it's based on actual emission data from our cement plants. And over time, for example, you can specify a lower and lower carbon content. What I like about that from a government policy perspective for any of the government policy people out there is that as a big buyer, remember the provincial and federal governments are large buyers of our product. If they can start setting a lower and lower carbon standard over time, that will allow the industry to compete on price and performance as well as carbon content and give us a very efficient way to reduce our carbon emissions. For our sector to reduce its carbon emissions, we need our customers to buy our low carbon products, including governments. So here's some of the things we're doing in terms of some of that leading research. We're working with various partners and we're demonstrating in our Richmond, Vancouver area plants project CO2 Mint, which is capturing CO2. And we're providing that captured CO2 for various pilot facilities so they can demonstrate the captured carbon usage in final products, carbon capture and utilization strategies. 
I mentioned earlier that mineralization is going to be one of the biggest initiatives in our sector. Uh, this is some research that was done by the Global CO2 Initiative in front of you today that shows you the roadmap for implementing CO2 utilization. Essentially, you take calcium oxide and you react it with CO2 and it forms calcium carbonate. You'll remember I talked about taking limestone and heating it up with fossil fuels to drive off the CO2 molecule and ultimately form lime, and the rich then continues to react in our kilns to produce cement. This is the opposite reaction. For the chemists in the crowd, it's an exothermic chemical reaction as well. So if we can take CO2 and calcium and produce limestone, sequestering that CO2 in a permanent chemical way, and we can use these manufactured aggregates, bespoke aggregates, if you will, in our concrete mixes that I talked about earlier. And this roadmap gives you a sense of the significant potential of this in concrete and aggregates. We're talking 150 to $400 billion in terms of potential sales by 2030. We're talking as much as 3.6 billion uh, kilograms of tons of CO2 that will be reduced by that same process. It's not going to be the solution for climate, but it's going to be one of the many solutions that we need along the way. I put this slide here to emphasize this is not just a couple of companies that are looking at. There's a number of companies around the world. What I think is very interesting is several of them are Canadian companies. And it highlights that this is actually a hot space in terms of R&D right now. So that's essentially our roadmap to net zero. It depends on our customers buying our low carbon products. And our part of the bargain is we're gonna offer low carbon products to our customers. You can see there's a lot of things happening in our space in terms of concrete and with a potential of it becoming a carbon negative product in the next 10 years. A very fascinating time. And I hope you found this useful in terms of understanding how our our sector is performing in terms of net zero contributions. Thank you.